Today I'm behind it with a brand new 2021 Toyota Venza, and this is the newest midsize SUV in Toyota's lineup. Now, some of you guys may remember the old Venza that was discontinued years ago. Sales-wise, it did okay, but it had a loyal following, and that one was based on the Camry platform. This one, very different. This one's based on the RAV4 platform and is being sold overseas too. It's known as the Harrier overseas, but in the US as the Venza. So how good is this brand new Venza and how does it compare to a RAV4? Those are questions I'll be answering in this video and I'm gonna cover a whole lot more. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Right off the bat, I wanna say that I borrowed this Venza from Toyota and this is a pre-production model. However, this should be very, very similar or close to the production model that should hit showrooms later this year. Just wanna say that right off the bat in case something changes when it comes out. First impression is when you walk up to a Venza, it looks very, very different from every other Toyota out there. You know, if you look at a RAV4, you look at a CHR, you look at a 4Runner, I mean, even a Highlander, um, they, they kind of have that Toyota vibe. And it's hard to describe what that means, but it, it, you've seen enough Toyotas out there where you know instantly that's a Toyota. This Venza just looks different. It, it is very curvy, but in a very elegant and sophisticated way. If you covered up the Toyota badges and threw on a Lexus badge, no one would know. I mean, this actually looks to me more like a Lexus than a Toyota. So look at the front end. It definitely has a long hood, a long sloping hood, and the taillights have a really distinctive look, very narrow, and also those daytime running lights, really nice in my opinion. And they even pop out during full sun, like you see here, I like it. And the rest of the grill has a kind of like a hybrid vibe, right, with a blue emblem and just the way that the grill opening is shaped very small on top bigger on the bottom now toyota has been removing fog lights from their lineup recently and some people don't care some people really care uh, unfortunately on this venza there's no fog lights either however there are some front parking sensors now moving to the side it definitely has that crossover look a mid-size crossover suv profile and that's not bad you have 19 inch wheels standard unfortunately they look kind of small on this venza if they were 20 inch it would look a little better so i was actually surprised i thought they were 18 inch but they are 19 inch they have a a deep you know gray gloss finish looks nice and on top you do see aluminum roof rails integrated looks nice and then you have some chrome around the windows and overall i think the side profile looks okay we'll take a look at the back end Toyota really made emphasis on the back end. It really looks futuristic, especially with that LED bar that's just going in the middle, right? And how the taillights flow into it and how they pop out on the side. It's a really unique look and I think it's a good one. On top, you see a shark fin antenna and a very large spoiler. And that's because the rear tailgate window is so slanted. It reminds me of RX. Unfortunately though, it does cut into the cargo room, which I'll talk about in a little bit. You have chrome dual exhaust tips underneath, and overall the back just looks good to me. Futuristic and has a wide stance, so I like it. So this Venza, if you look at the length, it's about six inches longer than a RAV4, which is why Toyota categorized this as a mid-size SUV and not a compact SUV. However, the wheelbase stays the same, the width stays the same, so overall, the, the dimensions is very, very similar. The length is longer, the height is a little bit lower, um, but what's surprising is once you get inside, you're like, what happened to the additional room, that additional six inches, because it doesn't translate anywhere. Behind the second row, there's, there's a good amount of room, but there's no hidden storage, no nets, nothing back there outside of a privacy cover. Underneath, you do have a spare tire but because of the way the the tailgate slants down remember i talked about the window being very slanted that cuts into cargo room so the cargo room behind the second row is smaller than a rav4 now of course you could fold down the second row and get more cargo room but 
the maximum cargo room in here behind the first row is still smaller than a RAV4. So the additional six inches didn't help cargo room one bit. In fact, you got less cargo room in here than a RAV4, which is a head scratcher. You're probably thinking, well, okay, maybe cargo room is smaller, but passenger room has to be better, right? And if you're thinking that, you're wrong. So moving to the second row, I'm five feet 10 and I have about three inches of leg room and about three, four inches of headroom, which is okay for a compact SUV. For a midsize SUV, if you compare this to any other two row midsize SUV, like a Ford Edge or a Nissan Murano or a Honda Passport, they're way, way, way bigger than this one. So this is really a compact SUV in terms of size and cargo room. Now, because this is a XLE, the seats are covered with leather and inside there's a cloth insert. So it's a combination of the two. And honestly, I can't tell if this is real leather or soft text material, but it does feel very nice. One of the things that stands out in this Venza is how comfortable the seats are. They feel very different than the other seats in, in the Toyota lineup. It feels very different, say, compared to a RAV4's rear seats or even a Highlander. It just feels better. It's, it's softer and it just feels really nice. Now, in the second row, you also get a pair of vents and a pair of USB ports, um, but that's about it. Nothing else back there front seats take a look they have a really good sporty vibe and the same thing it's a combination of leather and cloth in the middle i feel it holding my back really well again it feels really really comfortable i don't know what toyota did with these seats but they feel really good as for the cabin up front this is where the venza also shines kind of like the outside this cabin is the best in my opinion for a toyota every point that you can touch and feel like on a door panel on a dash everywhere even in the center console your armrest is covered with either soft plastic or some kind of leather and it just feels good all around steering wheels like any other toyota it actually feels pretty good the leather somehow is upgraded uh, the leather steering wheel in the Highlander and RAV4, they feel kind of scratchy. In this one, no, this actually feels really soft. Now, the controls are very similar, and if you move to the infotainment screen, it's very similar to what you find in a RAV4 hybrid, if not identical. On the left side, you have a gauge that measures what your powertrain is doing. If you're accelerating, it'll be in power mode. If you're kind of coasting on the highway, it'll be in eco, but if you let off the gas, uh, it'll be in charge mode. And also, you do have your temperature gauge there. On the right side, a traditional speedometer and your fuel gauge. In the middle, you have a very large digital info screen that kind of tells you everything you want to know, right? Your, your trip computer, your music, navigation settings, and you do have an eco mode where it'll tell you your fuel economy, how you're doing, your miles per gallon. There's an eco score where it measures you. On the, on the side, you have a few buttons for your auto high beam, your power tailgate, your traction control. You do have two settings for memory seats and also you do have power folding mirrors. Now moving to the infotainment screen, you have two screens. You have a smaller eight inch screen um, and that one actually has a volume knob. It's important to note that because this larger one, 12.3 inch screen does not. The 12.3 inch screen, customizable, there's like different menus that you can move left to right, like your uh, climate control, also your energy monitor, where it'll tell you if the engine is powering the battery or powering the wheels, vice versa. And of course, you can go into menu, you can see your apps, their settings, all that good stuff. Underneath, this is where I think the design element and looks is great. Now, functionality, so 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 everything underneath you see is utilizing a capacitive touch setup so although it's you know piano black it looks really elegant surrounded by uh, chrome it looks really good but the way it works is not so good because this capacitive touch has a slight delay so things like volume and temperature you know you have to wait a slight second before it actually reacts to your touch underneath you have 
wireless charging, two USB ports, and the push button start, which is in kind of like a weird position down there. And then you have an EV mobile button if you want to drive purely an EV, but the range and the speed is very low, so I wouldn't even recommend it. And then you have drive modes, usual stuff like normal, eco, and sport. And I'll let you guys know if there's a difference between them. You have a traditional shifter, which is nice. And you have a couple cup holders, heated seats, uh, some space under the armrest with a 12V outlet. And on top, you have home link buttons. Unfortunately, this XLE does not get the optional electronic chromatic uh, sunroof where it could just kind of frost. If you press a button, it frosts and unfrosts. But I'm kind of disappointed by the fact that even on this XLE, you don't get a normal sunroof or just the traditional sunroof. It's really strange because of this price range. Any, any car in this price range should have standard sunroof. And I'll get to that at the end of this video. Other features that you get in this Venza XLE, JBL premium audio system, a powered tailgate, also blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, and the full suite of Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which includes lane assist, adaptive cruise control, auto high beam, traffic sign recognition, emergency braking, and uh, pedestrian warning. All of those are included. Next, let's talk about the powertrain, which was also carried over from a RAV4 hybrid. Underneath the hood, you have a 2.5 liter four cylinder, and there's two electric motors underneath the hood. And there's a third one in the rear. In total output, 219 horsepower. Now, with that said, because this is a hybrid powertrain, fuel economy is outstanding. You get 39 miles per gallon combined, which is definitely class leading for a midsize SUV. However, it's still one less than a RAV4 hybrid, so keep that in mind, and that's due to the extra weight that's on this Venza. And it's important to note that all Venzas come with all-wheel drive. It's Toyota's electronic all-wheel drive system. That's why there's an electric motor in the rear, and the computer system just knows how to divert power front and rear and side to side. So how does a Venza drive? Well, I think you guys will be surprised because I really like it. Once you get in, you hop into a Venza, because this is a hybrid, you push the start button and really nothing happens. But it does, you just don't hear it. There's no gas motor that powers on. Uh, it's just dead silent. And once you start, you'll hear like a slight electrical whine. And you hear that from all, all hybrids. It's slight, but it's there. So rather than hear exhaust noise or engine noise, you hear the slight whine. And you just have to get used to it because it's, it's going to be there. So you try to, to really hide it, but you can still hear it. However, with that said, um, it's a very quiet ride. Besides the electrical whine that I hear every so often, um, and keep in mind I have the radio off, but besides that, I don't really hear anything. So I think the, the sound insulation in here is really good and it's it's better than what you find in RAV4. I really don't hear anything outside right now. There's a ton of cars I'm passing by and ones that's passing by me. I don't hear anything from them. I don't hear any wind noise, slight road noise, but it's a really quiet ride. So I like that a lot. You know, 290 horsepower on paper doesn't sound impressive. And some of the other four cylinder engines with high, high horsepower output, they don't feel very fast because there's not a lot of torque unless it's a turbocharged engine. Good thing about this hybrid engine is the electric motors, their torque kicks in really quick. So when you accelerate even around town, it doesn't feel slow. I was expecting this Venza to feel very, very, very slow, and it doesn't. It feels normal. It feels like the other, you know, V6, um, mid-size SUVs out there. It definitely doesn't feel slow. Okay. So that was acceleration from about 25 to 60. But not the quickest SUV, but not the slowest SUV either. It kind of feels like the same as other mid-size SUVs in this class, 
but you get much better fuel economy in here. So that is a really good thing. I think the powertrain is the right one. Now, if you're looking to tow, don't think about it with the Venza because Toyota doesn't even give a rating. In fact, they just recommend you don't tow it at all, which is strange because even on a RAV4, you could tow a little bit. There's some capability to tow, but in a Venza, Toyota just says, uh-uh, don't even try it. Now, as for visibility and driving position, really good. Nice large windshield, nice large windows. Same thing with the rear window. The exception is the blind spot. The C pillar gets very narrow, so it does cut into your blind spot a little bit. But the good thing is you get blind spot monitor in here, so it helps with that. And the driving position, I feel like it's slightly higher than a RAV4. I feel like I have more of a commanding view. So I do like that. I feel like I'm sitting a little bit higher, so I enjoy that. And I can see well past the hood. The hood just like slopes down, so no problem seeing past the hood. As for steering, pretty good. Uh, there's some play in the steering wheel, but it has a decent weight, so it doesn't feel too soft. And I like the way the steering wheel feels, so steering is good. Suspension feels comfortable. I don't feel too much from the potholes or the imperfections from the road. I feel like it's, it's, it's comfortable. There is some body roll, but it's not, not as bad as some of the other SUVs. And because of the way these seats are, I'm held in. I wasn't sliding around. So again, big, big plus to these seats. Braking feel is normal up to a certain point. So as you're coming to a stop, it's coming to a stop smoothly and in a controlled manner. And in the very last like couple of feet, that's where you could kind of feel the regenerative braking kind of taking over and you could hear and feel it, um, but it's slight and it's not bad. So I think Toyota tweaked it so that it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's not as good as a normal brake setup, but this is about as good as it can be with a hybrid. So lastly, let's talk about price. There's three trim levels to this Menza. You have the base coming around 33,000. You have the XLE, this one, around 36,000, and, and then the Limited, which comes in under 40,000. If you compare that to RAV4 Hybrid, it's thousands more. In fact, if you compare the base trim of both, it's $4,000 more. So you might be wondering, well, is the Venza worth it then? Because it costs more, has less fuel economy, and it's actually smaller, less cargo room and less passenger room. Well, it really depends on what you're looking for because yes, those things are true. However, in the Venza, I think you get a much better exterior, a lot more premium and elegant. Same thing with the inside cabin. I think this cabin could be the best one in a Toyota. And also, I believe you get a better drive. I think the driving position a little bit higher. Visibility is great. Also, these very, very comfortable seats. It's quieter in here, and I think the steering input is a little bit better. So it really depends on what you're looking for. To conclude, the Venza is a very different Toyota. It has Lexus-like styling on the outside, Lexus quality on the inside, it drives well and has amazingly comfortable seats. As for a score, I had a hard time deciding if the Venza should be in the compact SUV segment or midsize segment. I went with the compact SUV segment because the price is more comparable. Overall, I'm giving the brand new Venza a score of 100. To see how it ranks among its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, subscribe to the channel for more news, first looks, and news.